Now we've spent some time talking about the concept of validity, a valid argument. And remember, it's a concept for deductive arguments, arguments that are intended, whose premises are intended to guarantee the truth, to necessitate the truth of their conclusions. And notice I've been saying that valid arguments are these well-formed arguments. I said it has something to do with their form, and we're going to call it the logical form. And another way of thinking about this is patterns of arguments. Now, so far, the only way we've given you to figure out if an argument is valid or not is to try to find a counterexample, and if you fail, um, then and you can clearly identify why you can't find a counterexample, then you conclude that it is a valid argument. So let's go, there is going to be an easier way to do it, but let's go through a couple of examples to try to help us get there. First of all, let's look at our favorite example. Socrates is a man, all men are mortal, therefore Socrates is mortal. Is it valid or isn't it valid? Can we find a counterexample, an example in which those first two premises are true and the conclusion is false? Can we describe such an example without contradicting ourselves? And the answer to that is we're not going to be able to because if we have to describe a situation in which Socrates is a man and all men are mortal, we can't, we end up having to contradict ourselves to describe a situation in which Socrates is not mortal. It's not the case that Socrates is mortal because in doing that we have to describe a situation in which all men are mortal and some men are not mortal. We've contradicted ourselves so it's impossible. We can't find such a case so it's impossible for those premises to be true and the conclusion is false. Let's consider the second form of the Clifford argument. If you remember from last time, from, uh, from the last set of videos, again, you, you run into the same problem, that if you try to describe a situation in which those premises are true and the conclusion is false, you end up contradicting yourself because you're describing a situation in which all dogs are mammals, but some dogs are not mammals. You know, so that's a contradiction. So that again is valid. Finally, let's consider a more pleasant one, at least maybe for the people who are attracted to women in the class. And maybe we're attracted to Cindy Crawford. Cindy Crawford is a supermodel. All supermodels are attractive, therefore. Cindy Crawford is attractive. Now, some people might worry about the truth of that second premise. They might think not all supermodels are attractive. But the, uh, we're not worried about whether the argument has a factual basis. We're just worried about the logic of the argument. That is, can we imagine, can we describe a situation where those two premises are true and the conclusion is false? Can we describe a situation where Cindy Crawford is a supermodel? All supermodels are attractive, but it's not the case that Cindy Crawford is attractive that Thursday? No, because we, again, we have to describe a situation where all supermodels are attractive and some supermodels are not attractive, and one in particular, Cindy Crawford. So we end up contradicting ourselves. So in this case, we see that all of these arguments are valid.